Hello everyone, Nick Narzinski here from D3 Technologies with our coffee and cam tech tip. Today we're going to take a look at different methods for engraving your parts. So first thing we've got here is a part file. I've got a sketch created on the face of that part with a text box that I created. There's the text. So I'm going to finish that sketch, jump over to our cam environment and the cam browser. I do have a setup already created here. I'm going to right click go to new operation 2d milling and we've got an engrave strategy so the way that this works is you can either select embossed features or you can actually select text as well so i'm going to go into my tool library i've got a quarter inch 45 degree chamfer mill move on to the geometry tab i'm going to select that text that i entered and we're just going to simply say okay and then it's going to go through and calculate that so if I simulate this out, let's just turn the stock on here and hit play. You can see it goes through and engraves everything. So you might be asking, what exactly, how is it working on that? And I kind of made a sketch here in AutoCAD to show exactly what it's doing. So the engraved strategy works off the width of the text font. In other words, it takes that tool down until both sides of the chamfer meet up with the width or the edge of that font. So it's a little bit easier to see also what it does in these corners mm -hmm. if I use an extrusion rather than the text font. So if I jump back over here to the model, if I emboss that and turn off the visibility, so now I've actually got it embossed. And then if we jump back over to the cam environment, now you can kind of see what it's doing in the corners for that tool. Is it actually starts where the point of that tool meets the corner and it works its way downwards so it does vary in the Z level always keeping that tool in contact with the outside edges so some people like that some it's good for uh, doing little graphics and uh, artwork as well what you might want to do rather than that though is just take a tip of a tool and come straight across the font and come straight back out so if you're wanting to do it that way I can show you how so let's jump back to the model environment I'm just going to copy and paste that text so now I've got a sketch 8 here and let's just move it off to the side so with that created and actually I don't want to get out of there so let's go back to that so once you create text inside of here with the most recent inventor update we now have the ability to right click on any text and say convert to geometry so this so I'm in within the sketch, right click, convert to geometry, it brings up this text box. And now you can go through and select a different font and it kind of gives you a preview before you okay it of what that font's gonna look like. I found this ISO CP is a pretty decent font for just creating a single line sketch. And that's basically what it's doing. For those of you familiar with AutoCAD, it's kind of like exploding a font. But the, the downside to doing it this method is once you explode it, there's no jumping back to make that a text box again. So don't you know convert to geometry until you know that that's the correct geometry. So with that, I'm going to finish the sketch. This time, the strategy we want to use to, to uh, machine these sketched lines of the font is trace. So once I go into trace here, I'm going to use the same tool. On the geometry tab, instead of going through and selecting each curve of that um, sketch, there's an easier method. While you're on the geometry tab, just simply switch back to the model environment and select that sketch. That's going to find all of those um, letters at once. Going back to the cam uh, browser, the things you do want to change here is your passes. Since we're right on the top face of the part, we need to add an axial offset. So I'm going to put a negative 20 thousandths in there. We don't need chamfer checked. On the linking tab, I have it as a default not to keep tool down for the strategy, but if you have yours checked, you want to make sure and uncheck that, otherwise it'll drag the tool across the part. And then the other thing I usually do is change this retraction policy to the shortest path. So with that, there is your single line engraving strategy. So hopefully that gives you guys a couple ideas on different ways to and uh, engrave your parts with your numbers or any fonts. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Thanks, guys.